You know that moment when you walk up to a box and you think to yourself, I wish this had a cardboard zipper. No, me either. However, the engineer's attacks did, and the result is glorious. Missed it. So after four years, this is the newest Tax Neo unit, the Neo 3M. M standing for motion, as you can see right here. And I've been using it over the past month or so and figured it was time for an in-depth review. And I'd really go through this entire review, including the accuracy section and the final conclusion, because there's some interesting twists along the way. Now, the first thing you're probably noticing about the 3M is that it is a beast, like physically a beast. And the reason for that is kind of twofold. First, they've taken that power supply that normally sits outside the trainer and stuffed it into the back of it. And then secondly, they've increased a bunch of the internal cooling components to allow for a greater, quote, working area. In training terms, working area is basically used to describe how well a trainer can do resistance or provide for resistance at different speeds. So, for example, a really low speed climb uh, versus high speed type scenarios. It's much harder for trainers to do low speed stuff than high speed stuff. And TAC says they've increased the accuracy in those areas. And and that's something I'm gonna to put to the test. Of course, that's all kind of tricky because if you look at the specs for the Neo 3M, it's virtually identical to the Tax Neo 2T. It's got 25% gradient simulation, it's got an accuracy of plus or minus 1%, and a maximum resistance level of 2200 watts. So we'll have to dig into what the differences are in the accuracy later on in the accuracy section. But before we do that, we left off back at the zipper there, unzipping that thing, taking its pants off and top off and all that stuff. And inside, you've got the trainer sitting there all folded up, along with a whole bunch of parts. These parts are essentially different adapters for different through axle components. And in fact, one of the parts you'll notice on the trainer is a built-in cassette. It's an 11 speed cassette, which is a little strange to me for a trainer this expensive in basically what is almost 2024 right now to be 11 speed versus 12 speed. Certainly tax like Wahoo says that the majority of consumers out there have 11 speed bikes. And while I think that is true at this price point, uh, I suspect they're probably 12 speed bikes, but eh, maybe I'm, I'm somehow wrong. Anyways, all those adapters there allow you to go and put different through axle combinations or just regular uh, quick release skewer combinations on there. Uh, and most notably, those adapters now screw into the trainer, uh, which is kind of cool. They don't just fall out like most trainers. Uh, and they even include a small blue tool there to help you do that. But of course, you can use any tool from a toolbox if you want to as well. Also, in that whole process, you'll likely have unfolded the legs for the trainer. The trainer can fold out or fold up, just like past Neo trainers. Uh, basically, looks like a Star Wars, uh, you know, shuttle commander sort of thing. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but most notably, it's got a handle on it. Now, finally, there's a handle on this darn trainer. Now, once you've got your trainer where you want it, you're going to go ahead and take the real reel off your bike because it's a direct drive trainer and put your bike on the trainer. The one downside, though, to that beefcake case uh, is that it basically interferes with your derailleur when you're trying to put it on, unless you're in the smallest gear, like the physically smallest gear, the lowest gear closer to the outside of your bike, not the wheel side of the bike. Otherwise, it'll hit. On top of that, the derailleur cage, it's a long derailleur cage on this particular bike, uh, just kisses the edge of the Neo 3M frame. It doesn't like put any force on there, like it just barely, barely touches. In any case, once you got that all sorted, you can go ahead and plug in uh, the Neo 3M. Note that you don't actually have to plug it in. You can run this entire trainer self-sustaining without any power whatsoever. The only reason you wanna plug it in is for the feature called downhill drive, which will basically go ahead and forward drive the entire flywheel when you're going down a hill. So you can see right now in Zwift, I'm going down this hill uh, and the back flywheel is still spinning. It's not spinning because I stopped pedaling just a few seconds prior. I stopped pedaling like minutes ago uh, and it's just gonna keep on spinning and it's actually gonna change that speed based on the steepness of the hill. It helps to contribute to the whole reels and thing. It's a, it's again, it's a cool party trick. Now, anyways, back into an app. If you're ready to get this thing paired up, you're gonna go ahead into the app and you're gonna see both the AMP Plus and Bluetooth pairing options. The 3M adds an extra Bluetooth channel. So now two concurrent Bluetooth channels plus unlimited AMP Plus channels, uh, making it easy to pair up with virtually every app out there. In addition, Tax is also selling a new Wi-Fi adapter, which I've got right here. Uh, so you take this thing, and it's also got ethernet on the end of it as well. You take this thing, you stick it up the back of the trainer, that sounded bad, but that's where you put it. Uh, and then you can go ahead and get Wi-Fi on this or ethernet. Now. I appreciate this. It cost 129 bucks, which I don't appreciate. But more importantly, why is Wi-Fi not built into a trainer released in what is effectively 2024? Like, 
they saw Wahoo release the Wahoo Kicker V6, what, eight, not 18, 16 months or so ago. Like, that was no surprise that Wi-Fi would be built into it. I don't, I fail to understand why Wi-Fi is not built into a trainer, especially one this expensive. In any event, you'll configure the Wi-Fi networks using the Tax app. Uh, that app is free in terms of the configuration of the Tax trainer. If you want to do a bunch of other stuff, then it costs money. But for all the configuration components, it's free. You'll see your Wi-Fi networks, connect to them, and then you're off and running. And to be clear, you don't need the Wi-Fi or Ethernet side of things. It works perfectly fine, and most of my testing was without it. So that's really just if you want to be on that network as opposed to AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart. Okay, so once we've got into Zwift or whatever the app you want it to be, you're riding along, let's talk about the headliner feature of the Neo 3M, the M standing for motion. Uh, in this case, it motions in a few different ways. The first is the most obvious, going forward and back. Uh, so in this case, it's going to go forward 2.5 centimeters and backwards 2.5 centimeters. This is the exact same motion plates that Tax sold a couple years ago or started selling a couple years ago called the Tax Neo motion plates that you could put on existing Tax Neo trainers. There's no difference in this design at all. It is simply just now molded into the bottom of the Tax Neo 3M. There's also lockouts at the back there, so you can instantly turn it on or off if you want to, uh, if you don't want motion for some particular reason. Uh, now, the whole point of motion on a smart trainer is to reduce fatigue, uh, especially on longer workouts. By having a little bit of motion there, it forces your body to slightly and continuously adjust on the saddle. This is something that's been known for a long time and even proven in some different studies. I know Trek did a study a long time ago around this, uh, and so this is why we're seeing motion on so many indoor smart trainers over the last few years. With the tax implementation, you're not getting a ton of motion. I bought five centimeters, as I mentioned, in total range forward and back, uh, compared to Wahoo's Move, the kicker move system that came out a few months ago, which is up to 14 centimeters, about three times uh, more motion. Uh, however, for most riding, it doesn't really matter. You're only moving a tiny bit. Where that tends to matter a bit more, though, is sprinting. Uh, and that's where, in the case of the Wahoo system, you've got a little more range before you hit the end there. But to be clear, sprinting on pretty much any rocker system, whether it be these or full-on rocker plates, just sucks. Like, there's no two ways about it. Um, and so, in this case, the suck is slightly more or less, I don't know, it's just different kind of suck than it is on the Wahoo, which means you have a little more time until you find the end of that range uh, than you would on the tax motion side of things. Anyways, I've got an entire video coming out tomorrow that goes deep down the rabbit hole of the Tax Neo 3M versus the Wahoo Kicker Move. Like, I went, it's disturbing how far down the rabbit hole I go. Uh, now, back to the 3M in terms of movement. The second area of movement is the tilting side to side. This is something that's actually been on Tax Neo series trainers for a long time. It was, in fact, an engineering accident that has a slight tilting side to side. But with the 3M, they've made it slightly more purposeful. In particular here, they've made the movement a bit more symmetrical. Uh, in the past, you've got some like weird leaning situations. Tax says they've solved for that. Uh, and you do get that slight bit of movement. Uh, it's not a ton, but it's enough that you certainly do notice it uh, while you're riding. Now, in addition to the physical movement that your body will do, there's also some movements that the trainer will do internally to simulate outdoor movement. Let me just explain this to you. So the Tax Neo series is pretty much the only trainer, not pretty much, it is the only trainer out there that can simulate road surface. So it basically can simulate what it feels like to ride on gravel or ride across a cattle grate or ride uh, on cobblestones, etc. There's, I don't know, like half a dozen, maybe eight different uh, surfaces it can simulate. This has been around for a long, long time. Again, it's not like the most amazing feature, but it's also pretty cool the first time you do it and you're like, whoa, that, that feels like I'm actually vibrating across something. And the way it does that is these 32 magnets inside the motor. It's essentially stuttering the motor, but doing it at like millisecond level to go ahead and create that sensation or that feel. Which then gets us to the next question is how well does this handle inertia replication? In other words, how good is this trainer at replicating the outside world? Uh, so that includes things like acceleration, deceleration, does that feel natural? And the simple answer is yes. And something I talk about a lot where people always like to compare the Tax Neo series to the Wahoo Kicker and which has the best quote road feel. And I would argue they're both awesome. Like there's no two ways about it. I think if you were to put a bunch of people blindfolded on a trainer without any context for what that trainer is or sounds like or whatever the case is, uh, I don't think most people could tell the difference. I don't even think most like bike industry people could tell the difference between the two of them. Uh, they're just so good these days at replicating inertia in the ride field. And with that, I just mentioned sound. The main sound you're gonna hear here is the drivetrain. In other words, how clean your drivetrain is on your bike and interfacing with the cassette and so on. Uh, but in terms of like trainer noises, it's not making anything meaningful. Okay, so this is my voice right now. You can hear the echo. 
Uh, I'm running a 12 speed bike on 11 speed cassette so you can hear a little bit of imperfections in the chain, but I'll let you listen to this right now. And then listen for the shifting here. Just so you can hear a lot of that is by comparison. The one thing you will hear though, in really, really high intensities, uh, is you'll hear the fan kick on in the back. And again, you're unlikely to notice this in most cases because if you're putting on that much power, at least in my case, I'm gasping for breath. Uh, so usually when I hear that fan click on, I'm already well past gasping for breath and can barely hear it at all. Still, the noise is so low. It's well below your regular fan. It's well below your breathing. It's just like this tiny little, little uh, whir that you hear on the back of the trainer. Okay, so all like the riding type stuff, good. All is good there, right? Everything works out great. The next question is accuracy. Uh, and on paper, this has the same accuracy level as the Tax Neo 2T before it. And this is something when Tax was presenting this whole thing to me, uh, they said they kind of lamented the fact that that entire like category of accuracy is boiled down to one line, one spec line that says plus or minus X percent. That's it. But in reality, as you know, if you watch this YouTube channel for a long time, it's more than just that. It's accuracy across a large variety of ranges of different scenarios. For example, low speed climbs or high speed sprints or shifts in wattage that are massive and that kind of stuff. And most companies' accuracy claims are more broad and don't necessarily capture the edge of that. And that's true for tax as well. In fact, Garmin, like most companies, showed me a bunch of different internal testing things they did. Uh, but unfortunately, I couldn't publish those, which is really too bad because it shows just how much more unbelievably powerful this trainer is than even just the tax Neo 2T. So instead, I had to like recreate some of these tests using my standard testing protocol, and that's where you can start to see the impressiveness of it. And note that if you want to see all of my testing, it's in my written review down below. I'm just going to go through the highlights here because there's just frankly so many tests that I've done that it's kind of silly. Uh, so this test here is a 30 by 30 test. This is one I've done for every single smart trainer I've tested over the last decade, the identical test every single time, which makes it really easy to compare. And this test does two things. It focuses one on how quickly does a trainer get from a low wattage point to a high wattage point in structure workout mode. And then two, once it reaches that point, does it overshoot or undercut and how stable is it? As a general rule of thumb, you want the trainer to get to that upper point there in about two to four seconds. You actually don't want it to be zero seconds because that's like running smack into a wall. Like it just, your body would hate that. You don't want that at all. You want about two to four seconds will feel good. Uh, any longer than that, then it just takes too long to get through shorter intervals. So let's look at the 3M and how it performs in this test. When it goes up to that upper wattage point, it overshoots by a mere one to three watts. That is mind boggling. If you've seen my test before, you know that most trainers in the market will overshoot by about 15 to 70 watts. Like huge overshooting when they go to that first set point there, this just like sticks the landing, absolutely sticks the landing. However, what's even cooler from like a geeky standpoint is if you look at what it's doing in that four seconds, if you look really closely, it actually reaches 426 watts, so just about 20 watts short of its set point goal in three seconds, and then uses that last one second to arrive at the station, arrive on, stick on that landing more smoothly versus most other trainers just like blow through that point and then try to fix it after the fact. And if you look even more closely, you'll see that it takes the first second to slowly ramp up. Then between seconds two and three, it goes like full tilt up. And then that last second again, as I mentioned, it is arriving at the station. In one fell swoop, Tax has easily taken the best structured workout erg mode trainer away from Saris with what their H3 trainers and now H3 plus, I guess, uh, and put it in the Tax Neo 3M. And now it is a small crown, like in the grand scheme of things, in terms of finesse and things like that, but it is clearly the finesse winner. In terms of power accuracy, here is compared against Favero Asioma Duo pedals, uh, which are like one of the standards that I and others use for accuracy testing. It is like perfectly with that. It's like, like together a little buddies the entire time. I've also got the Stages LR in there as well. And because looking at graphs is somewhat boring, here's another erg mode test I did. It's identical. And then another erg mode I test I did. I could do this all day long. Instead, let's look at simulation mode. Simulation mode is what most people think about normal lifting, not in a structured workout where you're essentially following the gradient as it goes up and down hills and things like that. 
If you look here, one of the challenging areas for most trainers is high speed or high flywheel areas. Uh, you can see basically where I'm going really fast on the flats. Uh, and in this case, it's spot on. Like it, it tracks perfectly with the pedals from an accuracy standpoint. Good job there. Doing some sprints to about 800, 950 watts or so, uh, no problems. Like it's exactly the same. Uh, you will see slight differences at that very peak one second power. That's true anytime you do power meter testing uh, in terms of that peak one second power because of the differences between recording and transmission interval at one second. Uh, so that's, again, very, very solid there. No problems there at all. If I look at the if I look at the cadence graph on that, it's spot on. If I look at the power mean max graph on that, very good. Likewise, they did a long climb last night. I wanted to see how well it held up over a long period of time, if there's any drift or things like that. I do it at a higher intensity being held for the entire climb. I believe on this climb, I averaged about 290 watts over the 25 or so minutes. Uh, and in this case, it was spot on. Again, look at this mean max graph showing basically that power curve. Uh, and it is absolutely perfect. And in fact, during that ride, I also did high cadence work up to 180 RPM. It tracked perfectly with the Favera pedals there. And then I did low cadence work down to 19 RPM, which is just crazy slow, by the way, um, and also tracked perfectly there. Once below 19, it dropped out like most power meters do and most trainers do. It just can't like calculate below that uh, level of cadence. So overall, yes, this is incredibly impressive. It's too bad, like Tax says, that this is all just boiled down to one line number. Plus or minus 1%, check. Uh, when in reality, the under the neath, the under the cover side of it is super impressive. However, this gets to the final thoughts category. And the elephant in the room here is the price, which is $2,000. I mean, technically speaking, it's $19.99, uh, but it's $2,000, which is $400 more than the Wahoo Kicker Move that came out this past uh, fall that also has the forward and back motion and has relatively similar specs and accuracy claims and all that kind of stuff, uh, priced at $15.99. And it gets even trickier when you look at some of the feature comparisons between those two. For example, the Kicker Move has built-in Wi-Fi. It's got a longer range of that motion track there. Uh, it's even got the ability to connect it up to the Wahoo Kicker Climb for moving your entire bike up and down. Of course, that feature costs extra. And the Kicker V6 and Move also have race mode, which the Neo 3M does not have today, though Tax says that is coming, uh, just not there at launch. Inversely, there's some things that the Wahoo Kicker series doesn't have that the Tax Neo series does. For example, it has a downhill drive capability, it has the road simulation for cobblestones and things like that. And in particular, the structured workout mode and the finesse in that structured workout mode is clearly in Taxes Camp as a winner there. But of course, I've got an entire video set on that for tomorrow, so if you're not already subscribed, do that. Anyways, setting that aside, the Tax Neo 3M is an impressive beast of a machine. Uh, it's just one of those things where they've clearly spent a lot of time on the technical engineering of it, uh, perhaps though maybe too much time. Uh, and this will sound weird coming from me, especially if you watch this channel a long time. I'd argue they may have spent too much time on accuracy. Uh, not that it's too accurate, but that that time may have been better spent from an engineering standpoint on some of the other things that would have greater like appreciation from users, like built-in Wi-Fi, maybe race mode, and things like that that are perhaps more useful across the board to a wider set of users than just increasing the working area a tiny bit uh, in certain accuracy realm. In any case, if you've got the money for it, it's a great trainer. You can't go wrong there. With that, if you found this video interesting and useful, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.